Good afternoon, church. Well, let me start by giving a personal testimony. I'm, I'm quite overwhelmed with joy at this time. Yeah, yeah I, I see your faces. That's the reason why. But um, on a personal side, do you know the difference between a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse? Maybe some of you know the difference, right? The lunar eclipse, it happens at nighttime. That's why it's called the lunar eclipse, right? And it is the earth in between the sun and the moon. And the earth is the one casting the sh its shadow to the moon. That's the lunar eclipse. The solar eclipse, it happens during the day, right? So it's the moon blocking the sun from the earth. So the moon is in the middle. You know, it's really something to behold during the day when you see the moon blocking the sun. And especially a total solar eclipse, it only happens once in a while. They say it's once, <clears throat> even more than once in a blue moon. You know, the expression once in a blue moon happens when two full moons happen in one particular month. And it only happens every 30 seconds or 32 months. And you might be wondering, where is Pastor leading to this? You know, what, why is he discussing solar eclipse and uh, lunar eclipse? Well, I think, um, let me just share with you what's going on in my family, in my life. Um, today, in the past few days, we, my family and I, meaning my wife and I and my son, we are experiencing what we call a total solar eclipse, if I may use that word. Meaning, there is something going on in our lives that's only happening not only once in a blue moon, but once in a lifetime. And I'm talking about the side of my wife. You know, my wife is the youngest among six siblings. She has five older brothers, right? And five, her five older brothers right, are here today, if I'm not mistaken, right? <laughs> and the oldest brother, the big brother, right? Everyone is a big brother, but maybe the biggest brother is here today, uh, brother Jonathan Quimson. He's here today, so that's really a blessing uh, today in our lives, right? <clears throat> You can applause, right? Yeah. Praise God. To God be the glory. Right? And on my side of my family, uh, I, we are four, all in all, four siblings. And you always know my, my other two siblings. Uh, but our big brother is also here. Yeah, Pastor Alain Alon, right? He's over there. So today, so today, the whole family is here all the siblings of my wife and all the siblings on my side of the family and my parents and you know and nana rica the parents of, of my wife's uh, in my wife's side so this is a total solar eclipse in our family can you imagine that let me just get that out of the way so if pastor is is so uh, pumped up today and my sermon lasts for two hours you know the reason why. You know, my, I call him Kuya Lane. My Kuya Lane is our big brother, right? The reason why he's the big brother is because I am the bigger brother. And you know who is the biggest brother of all, right? <laughs> so good afternoon, church. Are you ready to hear the word, right? <laughs> so we're going to hear the third message of this series of messages we've been hearing from this pulpit entitled The Great Redemption. Oh, I'm so excited about this message. Right, the first Sunday, we heard about the idea of redemption. Right? The, the, the idea of redemption comes from this understanding of the word redemption from the Greek word agorazo, uh, meaning being or buying back what you originally possess in the marketplace as a slave. Remember this, right? The plan of God, initially, when He created mankind, He, he breathed into man the breath of life, and man became the living soul. And because sin entered in the world, the possession of God, he lost it. And he needs to buy it back. That's the idea of redemption. That's why I think we all always hear the word being saved, salvation, it's a great word. But I think the whole biblical design and the plan of God, what is more appropriate is the idea of redemption. Last Sunday, we heard the message from Pastor Einstein about the great story of redemption. And we took our message from the writings of Paul to the Christians in Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 1, right? We see there the blessings of being redeemed. 
Uh, we see there that the forgiveness of sin, or we heard about the, the adoption. We heard about uh, what, what we call the inheritance and what we call the guarantee by the Holy Spirit. Church, today, if you have your Bibles with you, I would like you to open this up in the Gospel or in the writings of Paul to the, to the Christians in Rome. And our, the title of our message this afternoon is Redemption, God's Plan. As God would allow us to understand and, and take to heart this afternoon what is this great story, what is the idea of redemption. And today, we're going to understand what is this great plan. And let me just excite you. So this is the third and last message for the series of message, but as the saying goes, all good things come to an end for bigger and better things. So next Sunday, we're going to start another series of messages entitled, uh, Sin is Sin. And this is a segue because after that, we're going to hear messages about the Holy Week, the Easter is coming. Can you imagine that, right? I think if I'm not mistaken, the first Sunday of April is Easter. So I want you to get excited about that. And I want you to follow all our series of messages because as a pastor, it's my duty if I may use that word, to prepare our hearts, especially during the Easter time. So this afternoon, church, open your Bibles in our text. It is the writings of Paul to the Christians in Rome, in Rome and the text is found in, in the chapter, of, the fifth chapter of, Ro, of Romans, starting with verse 18 through 19. We will see here why this great biblical desi design, the plan of God about redemption, actually is needed right, for all of us. Romans chapter 5, verses 18 through 19, the scripture tells us, Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemn condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. And in verse 19, for just as through the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinners, so also... The obedience of one man, the scripture continues, the many will be made righteous. May the good Lord add this blessing to the reading of his word. Let me share with you from what this scripture is telling us, two very important points for our message for this afternoon. The first point is, you know, the idea of redemption is really we are being, we are possessed initially by God, right? So God has a plan for us. The plan of God is to create mankind. As we have seen in our video, God is really fond of, of human beings, right? So the, the idea that when God created man in, Acts chap, uh, in Genesis chapter 1 and in Genesis chapter 2, remember the story, God formed something out of the dust, right? And breathed into this the breath of life and the man became a living soul. And if you look at chapter 2, you will find there that God really has this great and wonderful plan. The truth of this plan, let me just share with you, is He wants us to have this great and, and, and joyful and happy relationship with Him. That's why the first thing that God did was to put man in the Garden of Eden. Right? So what is the other name for Garden of Eden? It is called what, church? Paradise. Paradise. Can you imagine that? Right? That is the plan of God for us to live in paradise. Wow. So when He created man, He breathed into man the breath of life. The man became a living soul. And out of the ribs of the man, He formed, God formed the woman, right? Both man and woman was placed into this garden of Eden, right? You think the idea is for them to be there for the rest of eternity? You think that's the idea? You think that's the plan? That is the plan. That is the plan. Right? But we all know what story, what happened to that story. That's why you and I are here today, right? Understanding this great plan of God and what happened. The truth, right? God wants us to have a great and happy relationship with Him. And if God wants to have a great and happy relationship, right, with, with mankind, He will do His best to provide for His people. But the first step, what happened is sin entered into this world, 
in paradise. Remember the story, right? The first step towards sin is listening to Satan's lies in chapter 3 of Genesis. And that often is followed by doing what Satan tells us, what brings us or us will bring happiness. So here's mankind, or man and woman at that time, Adam and Eve. They were placed in the Garden of Eden, Eden and they have everything they, they needed, right? They, do they need to work, church, during that time? No. They have the food, all the food that they, they wanted to eat, right? They don't need the, you know, the, I guess the clothing that we are wearing today. But they are very well provided. They are happy, right? That is the intent why they are in paradise. Ironically speaking, we all want to go back to paradise, wouldn't we today? Right? If I ask you, you want to live in paradise? Who wants to live in paradise? Can I see a raise of hands? Can, can you imagine this? We were once in paradise. What happened? Right? And all because we thought that there is something better for us to be happy. We are trying to search for that thing so that we will be more happy than what God has provided for us. Amen, church? Right? That's what the mindset of Adam and Eve. They were tricked by Satan, telling them, right? Oh, there is something better. To be here in the Garden of Eden in paradise is quite boring, right? So there, after that came the rejection. The truth is, God wanted us to be happy. A great and harmonious relationship with Him to live in paradise for the rest of eternity. But it was man who rejected this, right? Because of the temptation that was provided to them by the devil. Remember this? Adam and Eve ignored God's warning, right? When he said, of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. I, can tell, I cannot tell you how many of those trees are. I mean, if your favorite is, is Atis, right? Or, or Lansones, those fruits that I, I still miss still at this time, I think they're there in paradise, right? Of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. Very specifically mentioned here. For in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. Right? This was written in Genesis, right? The rejection given to God because sin entered into the world. Because they were tempted by Satan and Satan is telling them, if you eat this fruit, you will become like God, right? You know, the funny thing is, this is the same reason, right? If you know the story why Satan was thrown out of the gates of heaven, right? This is the same reason why he was thrown out. Because he wanted to be more than God. And this is the reason why Adam and Eve fell into temptation and sin. Because they wanted to become like God. They think that is the thing that will make them happy. More happy than the original plan of God. I remember a story where there was this young couple who brought their children to they have a son and a daughter to the park. And as soon as they got there, one of the parents who were there before told them, uh, please make sure that your kids do not go over there in the bush because there's poison ivy over there. And so, you know, these two parents, they were responsible parents. They immediately told their kids, please don't go to that side of the park because there's poison ivy there. So as soon as the, their parents turned around, guess what the two kids did? Guess what? church. They went over there. Right? And so the dad saw right, his little one, his daughter about to touch a poison ivy. It's a good thing that he was able to catch her, but as soon as he was able to hold his hands, his daughter immediately jerked the hands off and he, she got loose and immediately embraced the poison ivy. That is the situation of all of us today. We have a loving God right, who wants the best for all of us. Right? 
all the dad can do is put something in his daughter's arm right, to prevent it from getting worse. But the consequences of what happened to her is there. Right? She felt pain in her hands. Same holds true with what's going on in the life of Adam and Eve when they tasted that fruit that was forbidden. Same holds true with us today when sin entered in our lives today. Right? God always have, I was telling our Sunday school this morning, our best intention in His heart, but more often, if not always, we are the ones responsible for what troubles we experience in this world. Church, what we see, first we look and admire. Right? Secondly, we touch and consider. Then we taste. Eventually, the sweetness turns bitter. Right? This is the plan. This is the truth. And this is the rejection. We were once gods. Right? He created us. He breathed into us the breath of life. And we became a living soul. And He placed us in paradise. Right? Yet, the possession of God for us was lost when sin entered into the world. But the definition of redemption, as we have understood, right? Buying back what was originally God's, right? So God bought us back. He purchased us back, right? So there is the solution, right? To sin, to the problem of sin. There is a solution why and how God can buy us back. Church, let me stop and pause for a little bit and ask you this question, right? Have you ever stopped to contemplate how redemption works through Christ's righteousness, right? How does redemption work through righteousness? We're going to focus on this, right? And this is the last point I would like to share with you in this series about the great redemption. I have just shared with you the plan of God, right? The plan of God is for us to live in paradise, right? Who wouldn't want that? God wants us to be happy. No doubt about that. But man has a different plan. We think we can be happy elsewhere, right? Not in paradise. That is the challenge, right? Even today, even today, I still see vacant seats here because people think they can be more happy elsewhere rather than be here. I consider this the paradise of God. You cannot be happy or happier apart from God. And the irony is we're trying to go back to paradise. In fact, we have a better, God has a better plan for us because we're not only going back to paradise, right? We're going back to heaven or we're going to heaven. You know, the, the sad thing is people if you mention paradise, they understand what it is, right? Oh, I want to live in paradise. They, they know that's a better place. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? Even the word heaven. Oh, I'm, I'm in heaven. There's a song, I'm in heaven, right? Meaning, you, you feel great. You're in a better place. But 90% of people today do not know the way to heaven. And there's a solution. This is the, the great redemptive work of God. We were once banned, banished from the Garden of Eden, right? Remember the consequence or consequences of the sin of Adam and Eve, right? So how does redemption work? If you remember, there's a classic story uh, of the movie Rocky. You're following Rocky? Rocky Balboa, right? Sylvester Stallone. You know, some of you were, were I guess, the, your head was bowed down, and when I mentioned uh, Sylvester Stallone, you just, you know, held your head high, and now you're, I got your attention, right? Um, Rocky Balboa was a washed-up fighter who pulls himself up by his own bootstraps to become the heavyweight, cha heavyweight champion of the world. Remember the first story in Rocky 1, right? Apollo Creed called uh, Rocky Balboa, and during that time, Rocky Balboa was already a washed-up fighter, uh, but 
for one reason or another, he was chosen. At that time, um, he got a call from Apollo Creed to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world. Something of a publicly stunt made by Apollo Creed. Church, instead of disgracing himself, if you remember the story, right, Rocky nears pull off and upset. He, he almost won. But the b best thing that happened to him, he was able to redeem himself. He was able to redeem his marriage, right? And this catapulted Sylvester Stallone to stardom because in 1976, it became the best picture. And there's like five more Rockies, right? Uh, and he made the career out of it. But it was something he did to redeem himself. Rocky Balboa, something happened in his life and out of his strength, you know, he was fighting, he was able to redeem himself. But this is different from the redemption, the solution that God has given us. Us being redeemed by God has nothing to do with us. Everything to do with God. When God created man, He breathed or breathed into him the breath of life. He placed him along with the woman in paradise. They were banished from paradise because of sin. It was not man who really wanted to go back to paradise. It was not man who has even the capability to go back to paradise. This was all the plan of God. This redemption plan is all His. We cannot take any credit for, for this, right? And I tell you why, right? So the solution, let me expound on this, implies, involves three wonderful things, right? For us to be redeemed through the righteous acts of Jesus Christ, right? we need and must have faith, faith in Jesus. Remember Romans chapter 3? Again, if you have your Bibles with you, Romans chapter 5, we read earlier two chapters uh, before that in Romans chapter 3, starting with verse 22, right? Paul said here, this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. So faith is needed to have this righteousness of God. And if we have this righteousness of God, we are His again. We are His possession. The word Righteousness means being right with God, right? Being right with God. There is no difference between Jews and Gentiles. And in verse 23, we all memorize this, right? For all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So in these particular two verses, we see redemption is a buying back from judgment, right? The the consequence of sin, we know that. The penalty of sin, it's already being judged. The penalty, we know the penalty already. It's like when you do not pay your taxes on time. By the way, you know, time is coming again, right? April 15, right? There is penalty. It's already said. There's already a rate for it, right? Same holds true with sin, right? When sin entered into this world, the penalty associated with sin is death for the wages of sin is death remember this church right but redemption is buying us back from the judgment right as if god really in his own desire because of his love for all of us he wanted us not to experience that death right so he he has this plan of redeeming us there's it's some sort of a a search and rescue operation Right? A rescuing and recovery from being lost. It is being released from the penalty of sin. So there is this plan of God for us to be released from the penalty of sin. Are we following church? The plan of God? When He created us is to be in the Garden of Eden so that we will have this harmonious, joyful, happy relationship with God for all eternity. Sin came into the world. God lost possession of our soul. And the reason why we... God lost the possession of our souls because sin enslaved us. Remember this? And so the penalty of the sin is death. So God made this plan through righteousness of Jesus Christ and how we can be redeemed through His righteousness. First and foremost, we need to have faith in Jesus Christ, right? Second, 
this righteousness, we have to have this understanding that this is freely given by Jesus. Right? Freely given. Put this in your mind because this is part of our conclusion later. Freely given by Jesus. You know, sometimes there's a downside because this can, can easily be said. This is, this is synonymous to the word grace. Right? Grace means unmerited favor. Right? Grace means freely given. Right? But there is this idea. There is this idea when it is freely given, two things. Right? When it is freely given, it is called a gift. Would you agree? Right? Because if you pay something for, for a thing to get it, it is not free, right? But if you get it without paying, it is considered a gift, right? But more importantly, it is free, it is a gift. The idea of a gift is it is, it is being given to you, a free thing to give to you. But the more important thing, the emphasis is for you to accept this gift. Are you following me, church? Right? So this righteousness, the way we're going to be redeemed, right? this search and rescue mission, number one, you need to have faith in Jesus. Right? Romans, 3, chap Romans chapter 3, verse 22, for all of those of you who have faith in the righteousness of Christ Jesus and you, you believe we'll have the righteousness of Jesus. For, you know, this is the same for, for the, the Jews and the Gentiles. For all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. But the idea of this faith also is you need to accept the gift being given to you, right? The emphasis here is the gift is needed to be received. Look at, look at Romans chapter 3, verse 24. All are justified and made upright and in right standing with God, freely and gratuitously by His grace. His unmerited favor and mercy at Christ's expense. Remember this. Remember the acronym GRACE, right? GRACE, G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense through the redemption which is provided in Christ Jesus. So you would think maybe there's other ways for God to rescue mankind. Why, why did God need to send His one and only Son, right? Why did Jesus needed to die and give His life, right? Why is His blood needed to wash away our sins, right? These are the things right, that are needed for this rescue, recovery, salvation, redemption to be accomplished in our lives today. Remember, this is all God's, right? This is all God's doing. Right? This, the solution so far today is all God's. H have we done anything yet? Right? Pastor, you need to have faith. I, that's one thing. Right? You need to accept this free gift. Right? That's the second thing. And the third thing I would like to share with you is this. Right? Completed through pardon from God. First, we need to have faith. Right? Second, we need to accept this free gift. Right? And this redemptive act of Christ will be completed to us, in us, through pardon from God. Let's, let's talk about being pardoned for a while. Right? Look at our text found in verses 18 through 19 in Romans chap chapter 5. These two verses are very powerful. Look at this. Conse consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, who is this one trespass? Or what is this one trespass? This was the sin committed by Adam, right? So also one righteous act resulted in justification in life for all people. Who's, whose righteous act is this one? Jesus Christ. In verse 19, for just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners. Who, was, who is this ma one man? Adam, right? So also, through the disobedience or the obedience, I mean to say, of the one man, the many will be made righteous. Church, 
this whole redemptive act right, is all because of condemnation of sin. Right? And that is what this res, uh, search and rescue operation by Jesus Christ uh, is needed to be done to redeem us, right? First of all, by giving us this free gift for us to have faith to receive it. But last and last and foremost is for us to be pardoned, right? Completed through pardon. When we say pardon, we need to be forgiven from our sins. Are you following, church? Right? That is the reason why Adam and Eve was banished from the Garden of Eden. Right? Because they committed sin. Amen, church? Are we following? Right? This is the same way why we cannot enter the heaven today. Right? Because we have sinned. Is it the same, church? Right? Why the original plan of God cannot happen for us to enter back, whether it's paradise or heaven, is because of our presence of sin in our lives. Hence, that's, that's the work that was done by Jesus Christ. Right? The, the sad thing today, when people are trying to preach about salvation, is the idea only of salvation, hear me out church, is for us to be with Jesus in heaven. Seldom you will hear preaching about sin and forgiveness of sin. Right? We don't want to be called sinners. Right? We, we want a Savior who will save us from what, church? Why, why is it called a Savior? We say, it's called a Savior because Jesus is saving us from the penalty of sin, which is death. It's the same, right? As sin, but People would think that they can be in heaven without being pardoned, without the forgiveness of sins. That cannot happen. That cannot happen. That's why as bold as we can be today, and I'm standing as your pastor, the last point for this message, you need to have, to have faith, right? but you need to be pardoned from your sins. And there's two ways to be pardoned from your sins. Because there's no way you can enter heaven without being forgiven from your sins. Remember, um, if you remember Nicodemus, right? In John chapter 3, right? How can he enter the kingdom of heaven? What did Jesus say? Unless a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, you know, Nicodemus was a learned man, just like all of you today, right? You're all learned men, uh, men and women, uh, educated. So Nicodemus said, Jesus, oh Rabbi, how can I be born again, right? How do I need to enter back my mother's womb and be born again? Because I tell you, that's the only way we can enter the kingdom of God, by being born again. What did Jesus say? Unless... A man be born of water and spirit. He cannot even see the kingdom of God. Why? Because no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is forgiven of his sins. The same reason why man was banished from the Garden of Eden. So when we need, we must enter the kingdom of heaven, we must be washed away from our sins. And there's two ways for us to be washed away, forgive it, for, be, forgiven, forgive, uh, be forgiven from our sins. Number one is we need to repent from our sins. So this whole solution of redemption it's already complete pending the pardon of God. And this pardon of God here is your part. Our part. Everything else. Everything else was done by God. You need to repent from your sins. We need to repent from our sins. Remember Acts chapter 2, verse 38? Repent. Right? 
The second thing, after we have repented from our sins, is we need to be washed away from our sins. Washed from our sins. We need to be baptized. Unless a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. There is no sin in heaven. Not one iota of sin. This is the solution. Right? For us to enjoy heaven for eternity. This completes the pardon of God. Faith in Jesus, freely given by Jesus, completed by the pardon of God. When we repent, repent and be ye baptized. What did the scripture say? So that you can go to heaven? No, no, no. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, the scripture is clear. Repent and be baptized for the remissions of your sins. And people would come back to me and say, Pastor, are you just being baptized so that you can be forgiven? Of course! That's the reason why you are being baptized. So that you will be washed away from your sins. Some people would say, it has nothing to do with salvation. How come it, there's not, it, it has nothing to do with salvation? You cannot be saved without being forgiven from your sins. That's the reason why you're being saved from the penalty and pangs of sin, which is death. Right? So you need to ask for forgiveness through repentance. And you need, you must be washed away from your sins. Through baptism. We have a baptistry here. Right? I am praying every Sunday people will come to be baptized because that's the only way we can be redeemed. Everything else God has done right? is portion. Right? We need to have faith in Jesus. We need to understand it is freely given. There is nothing that we did. We need to be pardoned through repentance and baptism. The redeemed, we, are dependent of God for all. God is both the purchaser and the price. For Christ, who is God, purchased a redemption by offering Himself as the price of our salvation. Can you imagine, imagine this church? Anyone Anyone who goes to hell today does so because they refused to accept the pardon that is offered to them freely through the, redemp the redemption that works through the righteousness of Christ. Let me end by telling you this story. There was this man who was convicted of murder. The night before his execution, someone came to visit him wearing a black suit and a Bible in his hand. This fellow asked to see him, but this convicted murderer refused to meet with him. And he told himself, why would I need religion today? Why would I need a preacher today? It's too late. They were not even present my whole life. And now, he is here to tell me something. Next day came, and before the rope was put into his neck, the sheriff asked him, do you have one request that you want to have at this time? The convicted murderers told the sheriff, I was not able to fall asleep last night. I was thinking about that man who visited me. I assumed that he was a preacher. Can you tell me who, who was this man? The sheriff told him, Well, last night, the governor came to see you. The governor came to pardon you from your crimes. So at this time, at this time, you will die not because of your sins. 
at this time, you will die because you refused the pardon being offered to you. Church, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You and I, we are all the same. We are all sinners. The rede redemptive work of God will not allow us anymore to die because of our sins. God paid our sins through Jesus Christ by dying on that cross. The sins are all paid. But some of us, some of us today, the people today will die not because of sin. They will die because they refuse to accept the pardon of God. So I ask any one of you today, the redemptive work is done. It is completed. All you have to do is have faith in Jesus. Repent from your sins and be baptized. And the promise, you will enter the kingdom of God. You will enter heaven better than paradise because that's the plan of God for man to have this great and happy relationship with Him. You cannot find happiness elsewhere. Today, we're going to sing a hymn of invitation. Any one of you here who wants to accept that pardon, the redemptive work is done. Christ died on the cross. You want to live and not suffer the consequences of your sins. Come up front. You are not here by chance. I tell you, there is a reason why you are here. God made it for you to be here. Not because you want to hear Pastor Arnel preach, but because you want to hear the message of redemption that God is giving us this afternoon. I encourage you, accept, do not refuse. The scripture tells us today is the day of salvation. Let's all stand up, church, that give glory to God.